it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So today it's a special request for Sailor Moon. I have never even watched this, but um, looks pretty cute. All right, so I bought the file on Etsy like I usually do, and I'm gonna show you how to download the file and then upload it into Design Space. So this is gonna be very similar to any other place that you buy from. So this is Etsy. You're gonna go into, of course, your purchases, um, and click on download files, but this would be the same for creative fabrica font bundles design bundles you get it. So all right, let's download the file and For me what happens when I download the file is it will pop up over here, which give me a second I'm gonna put it up here so you can see this. All right, um, it takes you here. You need to download it so it comes over as a zip file. Most of these files will come over as a zip file because they're gonna give you diff different formats, so PNG, JPEG, all that. Um, so you're going to need to unzip it. So I always click on this and go to um, show in folder, and that way I can look at it and see which one I want. So here's my folder. I'm gonna double click on it. All right, so this is the one I want here. So I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna move it into my desktop. That way I know when I'm in design space, I'm gonna go to upload. I know that it's gonna be in my on my desktop. So let's go to upload image, browse, and go to desktop. Oh, I'm already in desktop. <laughs> Okay, scroll down. I think it came over as, oh, what's her name? Serena? Uh, no, what is Sailor Moon's name? Hold on, sorry. Let me go back over here. Serena, okay. Did I not see it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so Serena, double click on it. And you can change it here. I'm going to add Sailor Moon because there's no way I'm going to remember that her name is Serena. So um, when you put in an image name here, it now becomes a searchable file within um, images. So it's gonna be dumped in there with all the images that are available on Design Space. So you wanna make sure that you name it properly. You also can add tags. I never do, but that would help you narrow it down. So, all right, let's click on Save. Now I like this image because it's broken up into a lot of pieces. So we know she has super long blonde hair, but let me make this a little bit smaller. Give me a second, I'm gonna move myself over so that you guys can see me better. Okay, I'm gonna move it right here. Okay, so as I was saying, I like this image because it's just broken up into a lot of pieces. You have her face, um, her hair, the two buns are separated. So we can make this file really big and probably still be able to keep everything seamless. I think the only, the biggest piece on here is actually going to be her shirt. So that kind of stinks because this arm is kind of, <clears throat> is kind of long. The only thing that I think we could do if we really needed to is extend this black over here and connect these two so that the arm up here is separated from the bottom. That will buy us a couple inches. Um, same thing here. I'm almost tempted to extend the black up here so that the sleeve will be its own piece and then the middle shirt is its own piece. But let's see how big we can make this. So, um, Let's go for 25 inches and just see what we get. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so 25 inches. Let's ungroup her and just break down the individual pieces to see what we have, okay? So here is her sleeve. So her sleeve, it's 14 inches by 12, but we, oh, you know what? So that's okay because if we slice it here, that will buy us some inches if we slice it here. Um, this is 12. So actually, all right, let's check out. I, you know what? Let's just do her at 30 inches and see what we have. I wasn't sure that we were gonna be able to do it, but 
let's look at her shirt. So her shirt, let's go to contour and see how it's broken up. So her shirt right now is broken up by, oh, so the sleeve is by itself because it's broken up right here. Okay, so let's click on, the, let's hide all. What does that leave us? It leaves us with this piece. Let's see how big this piece is. This piece is 14 inches by 10. All right, so we know we're gonna need to extend this up. That will cut off this whole arm and that will make both pieces um, something that we can cut on the Cricut. So let's not worry about that, but let's go back to contour. We want to see how big, how long that piece is. And let's remove this. Did that work? No, I want this piece and I don't want this piece. All right, let's see how long this sleeve is. So this sleeve is five inches by 14, but let's see. Hold on, let's undo that for a second. Oh, I still need to ungroup it. Okay, so let's ungroup it. Let's click on this, this piece right here. So right now, technically we can cut it on a 12 by 24 piece of cardstock, but I don't want to. I only wanna use 12 by 12 cardstock because I'm going to assume that most of you guys only have 12 by 12 cardstock. I do have 12 by 24, but it's so expensive that I'm not gonna use it unless I really need to. So let's rotate this a little bit and see if it buys us any room. So the old design space before the update, when I rotated the image, Design Space would recalculate the new width and the new length. It no longer does that. It keeps its original measurements. So the way to see the new measurement is to unlock the file. And so now it's 9.7 by 12.5. So I don't wanna make it bigger or smaller or change the size. I'm just rotating the same image. I just wanna know if this is gonna fit on a 12 by 12 mat with 12 by 12 cardstock. So I'm gonna Let's see, that's 12.5, I don't, oh. All right, so um, this is now 11.8 by 11.2. I can cut this on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock on a 12 by 12 mat. Design Space is gonna say, no, you need a 12 by 24 piece, um, but you don't, right? So just pretend that we have it, and Design Space will cut, <laughs> your Cricut will cut this perfectly on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. All right, so at 30 inches, I think we're good. Um, let's go back and contour and bring back everything. So to quickly bring back everything, click on hide all and then show all. It will all come back. So we are at 30 inches, so we don't need to do anything. Let's save her, um, go to save. And did it not do it? Okay, here we go. Sailor Moon, 30 inches. Okay. And let's hope it saves. Okay, it did, perfect. All right, so let's work on this sleeve. We know that we need to um, slice up right here because it was too long. And so let's break this up right now into um, pieces, sections. So I wanna separate this collar up here. So that's one piece. This is gonna be two, and this is gonna be three. So I'm gonna use contour. When you use contour to break apart pieces, however many pieces you wanna break it into, you need that many copies. So I need three total copies of this. I'm gonna to go to duplicate or duplicate um, and make and have three copies. All right, so here's my first one. Go to contour, and I'm gonna click on hide all. And it's gonna leave me this big piece, right? Um, oh shoot, I have those things too. Okay, I, I want these little slits in here, so I need to click on that, and that's gonna give me this piece that I want. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the next one, contour. And this time I want all these little slashes. So click hide all, but I want this one, this one, oops, this one, this one. All right, where are you? <laughs> I want these two pieces. Then I want this one, this one. Oh my gosh, are you not letting me click? I think these are my pieces. Is that it? No. I want that there. 
Oh my God. <laughs> no. What is going on here? Okay. Let me see if I can click there. Okay. I have my six pieces that I want. I don't want this piece. Oh my gosh. I, I know. I kind of hate contouring for those reasons. Let's see what I have here. Did it work? Okay, it did. We can slice this up later. All right, let's get the last part of this shirt. Go to contour. We want to hide all. We want this arm. We want this slit. And we don't want this. So right now we broke up the shirt into multiple pieces, right? This one I separated like this because we can easily slice it. So I'm gonna take a square and I'm gonna slice it so that we can have, when we go to cut this, we can be more efficient and move it around. It doesn't have to be um, on a 12 by 24 piece of cardstock to cut this, right? Okay, so let's do it by sections. I'm gonna get this. So I'm gonna slice here. When you're slicing, you can only slice two things at one time. So the white is one thing and then my square is the other thing. So I'm gonna move this down, get rid of your slice results, we don't need it. And see now this is now no longer attached to that piece. Okay, so let's do this one here. And I can use the same square, I just wanna make sure that the piece that I put under there, that it's completely covered by the square. All right, so here we go, get rid of the slice results. And so now we have this over here and we also have this, perfect, okay. So now I'm gonna get rid of this. Let's look at this piece. This piece we didn't need to do anything, right? Because we moved it and let's move it some, oh, hold on. So when we move this, it's see, 11.5 by 11.4, 11.1 by 11.6, perfect. I'm just gonna leave this here. We know that that's fine. Okay, this guy though, we know it's too long. There's nothing that we can do to move it or whatever. But the easiest thing to do is to continue this line up here and slice it off. So what I'm going to suggest is we're gonna to go to text box. And I love this font for it. It's called I Love Glitter. So if you don't have this, what you wanna do is you wanna to go to dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com and it's a free font. So you want this font, the letter that you want or the key that you want is, it's the square bracket. It's to the right of the letter P. So when you do that, where is my little thing? Did it not come in? Okay, hold on. I love glitter, I want the square font. Okay, there we go. It gives you this little glyph. And I like it because it has the little curves. So it gives us a natural curve to continue and extend this break, okay? So first thing to, to do this is you need to make sure that the width of this glyph is the same as right here of the break so that it matches. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and I'm actually going to zoom in so that we can see it a little bit better. So let me move this over to where the white shirt is. Move it over, okay. So you see our glyph here, it's done. Let's see, it's, it's almost the same size. I can put it in so that we can actually see it. Um, I'm gonna make it, I mean, it, it's almost the same size. I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller, okay. So, and you see how this curve, it matches this, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna slide, oh my gosh, I hate that. Okay, let me undo it. I'm not used to when we rotate it, Design Space now has the X button all over the place. So let me undo that for a second. Is it gonna bring it back? That's the other thing with the new Design Space. When you delete something and you click the undo button, it doesn't always undo it. So let me bring back my square bracket for the bazillionth time. <laughs> okay, let's make this bigger to match the width of this. Okay, here we go. See, so when I rotate it, I'm used to the X button being at the bottom. 
not rotated with that. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, I did it again. <laughs> Let me see if it will work. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm, I apologize. Let me put that back in. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's get it. Okay. So the rotate button is here. I want to get it so it's very natural that it comes back up. So I'm trying to rotate this to fit that curve without deleting this glyph. Okay. It's close. You see, like it's almost there. I'm going to just rotate it a little bit and then move it over. And maybe even just a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. So now what we wanna do is we wanna grab the cliff and we wanna grab the white shirt and slice. I feel like I could have turned it just a little bit more, but I, <laughs> right now with my luck, um, feel like I would probably lose the glyph yet again. So let's delete that. We don't need that. Let's remove this. So that looks good. Okay. So now that you see how we caught a little bit into the shirt right here. So this last one, you want to click on it. Um, no, you want to click on this, the slice result, right? And go to contour. We don't want this bottom piece. We only want this top piece there. Oops. Jeez. Okay. So you know what? I didn't do it right. Hold on. Let's undo that for a second. Okay. So I actually did the opposite of what I wanted. So I want to go back here and click on contour. I don't want this piece. I want this little piece because I want to weld that piece back. So let's go to contour. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making all these mistakes. I don't want this one. I want this one gone. So now you see how it's gone. That little piece is, is sliced out. So what I want to do is I want to grab this and that little piece. It's just so tiny. It's barely there, but I want to weld it back together. And when I weld it back together, you'll see that the shirt goes back to the way it was before, except it now has a whole cut. So let me zoom back out. So now you can see what the shirt looks like. Okay. It looks natural. It doesn't look weird that the shirt is sliced right there, right? Here's the seam goes all the way up. The arm is separated from the shirt and now your shirt is going to be seamless. So we didn't need to create a seam. Well, this is a purpose purposeful seam. The other thing was to just slice it and push the paper up against each other and hope that no one notices that cut, right? But this is way better because to me, it looks very natural. So, all right. We are good with the white. So now what we need to do is we need to make a duplicate copy because we want to separate it into two pieces, right? So we're going to go to contour and separate. So click on contour and we want to get rid of this. So that leaves us with just the arm and the arm is seven inches by 10 inches. So we can cut it and contour the second piece. Now we don't want, let's hide all. See, And it leaves us with this piece. And now this piece is, eight and a half inches by 10 inches. So it's all seamless, right? So right now she is, for all intents and purposes, she's seamless. Let's look at the at her hair and see what we have. We know this, we may have a little bit of problem, but again, we can you know work our way through this. So her hair is in one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna call this six pieces. So let's go to and make six image six total images of this so three four five six all right contour um let's hide all and that leaves us with what okay left us with the middle now with the middle i do want these little little guys in there um okay so that's good let's see how big 
this middle piece is. Yay, 11 inches by 8.7. So it's gonna be seamless. It's gonna look fabulous. All right, let's go contour, hide all, and let's now, this is, um, this is my trouble piece right here. So let's, I wanna see this piece. I don't want the hair. And let's see what we have. All right, not a problem. Three inches by 12 inches. We know then when we rotate this that and make it more diagonal, we won't have an issue. So Sailor Moon, you are gonna look so stinking adorable. All right, let's continue. Go to contour to do the next one. Hide all. And we want the bun, we don't want this. So here's our little bun. Our little buns are tiny. Let's go to the next one, contour. Hide all, we want the other bun. We don't want the middle. Okay. All right, so we've gotten everything but these two pieces down here. So let's go to contour hide all. I want this piece. I don't want this piece. Two inches by 7.6. And now our last piece, contour, hide all. And we want this piece. We don't want this piece. Um, we also want this. Hold on. We want, what is going on? I want this piece right here. Oh, there. <laughs> okay. And we don't want this piece. I not do this right? Hide all. I want this piece and this piece. I don't want this piece. I know contouring is amazing, but I have such a hard time selecting things. All right, uh, four inches by eight and a half. Yes, I seriously, this is what makes the off the mat so awesome. All right, this is eight and a half by 5.4. It's pretty concise. I'm gonna leave it together like this. Let's look at her skirt, her skirt I'm going to just actually, because I hate contouring when I don't have to, I'm just gonna take a square and slice it up. I feel like slicing is faster for me. So I'm gonna slice this little corner right here first. So let's grab this, slice. Okay, then I'm gonna move this over the skirt is going here next. I'm gonna grab it this way. And notice that I left this piece in here, <clears throat> but it's okay because my cursor didn't pick it up. My cursor only picked up the blue and the square, so I'm gonna slice there. And you'll know if you if you picked up more than two items. Slicing will be grayed out, so that's how you know you, you've made a mistake. <laughs> all right, so let's move this down here. And again, I'm leaving all this here. I'm just gonna go this way and slice, and I'll leave these three little bars together. All right, let's stick this in here, and slice. All right, so let's get rid of the slice results. Now the other thing is, so far she's been pretty simple, right? But here's where um, I'm going to, we're getting rid of all the slice results. Um, I'm going to make a suggestion. Our little stripes right here. These three, it's three individual pieces. I want to weld them together, okay? And this is how I would do it. Go in, grab a square. And I'm going to zoom in so that we can really see what we're doing here. I don't want to ruin this piece by making it horrible looking. Uh-oh. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to unlock it and make it really thin. Like that, okay? Then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna rotate it. Okay, so I'm gonna make it all the way to the end. No. Oh, so it's already unlocked. I'm gonna pull this out and stretch it so that it hits all three lines. Then I'm gonna grab this and weld it. So it's still gonna have the stripes, 
but instead of three pieces that I need to hold on to, it's now one piece that I can tape, one piece that I'm gonna take off to, to you know, off the mat, um, and one piece that I need to tape or glue down. It's so much easier than three small little pieces. So let's go back and see if we wanna do that anywhere else. I mean, I'm tempted to do it with these pieces, but at least these pieces are long enough. This one was short and thin, so that's that's how I made my choice. All right, <laughs> let's look at her face. Um, and here are her eyes. So the eyes, for whatever reason, are grouped together. I'm gonna ungroup it, and they're in individual pieces. That small little white guy, I can't guarantee it's gonna make it to my final. <laughs> so if it gets messed up in the cut or if I lose it after I peel it off the mat, I'm not gonna redo that one. So just know that little guy is too small for me. Um, okay, let's look at the face for a second. Um, okay, so the face, I, you know, obviously we need to separate the arm and let's just slice it off right now. So bring in a square, make sure that the square completely covers whatever piece that we're slicing off. So, all right, here we go. Grab these two items and slice. And get rid of your slice results. Okay, so now the hand is six inches by 3.7. This is 8.6 by 12.1. Mm, it's fine because we can rotate this a little bit, I think. Let's rotate this a little bit over and unlock it. Eight inches by 11.6, so this will cut fine. Now, the only thing that I would suggest is uh, these little pieces. Maybe weld it like we did the stripes. Um, but that's minor, these, I mean, it's just a few pieces. What I do want you to do though, is I want you to duplicate the face. And on this one, let's go to contour and click hide all. I want a copy of this face only. Okay, so I think that did it. Okay. And you see how there's the eyebrows and the eye. So there were pieces that go inside, right? Like inside the eye was her, the blue and the white, but there was still a lot of empty space. So when we slice this big piece, cause this piece is 30 inches long, there may be seams going through the face. So I wanna be able to cover up those seams. And we do that by making a copy of the face and turning this one into black. So when we cut this, what happens is when we piece this together, you're gonna put on top, on the bottom is this, right? It's gonna be in pieces. We have to piece it back together like we do a puzzle. So there may be seams on here. So then what we do is we put the black down over the seams, right? And then we put the face on top of this black copy. So let me send this to the front just so you can see what it looks like. So let's just pretend there's a huge seam running down the eye right here. Well, when you have that black piece behind it and you do this, that seam is now covered up. So it, her face will look flawless and everything else is going to be flawless. So the only seams we're gonna have are at the edges and they're gonna be tiny because it's gonna be covered by the colored pieces. So all that's left is maybe like an inch in seams in total. So that's adding a little bit here, a little bit here. So it's gonna look really, really good. All right, let's zoom back out move everything the only thing that we have left to do is the big piece so let me move all this stuff out of the way to make it a little bit cleaner oops hold on let me grab all this okay so we've got her image she is 23 inches by 30. so that kind of stinks because 11 point oh, yeah she's a little bit I wonder if I can rotate this image a little bit. Let's rotate it. I don't think I can. 22 inches. <laughs> I 
I'm just trying to see if I can, uh, it doesn't look like I can. I'm gonna go back to the way it was so that we don't mess this up anymore. Okay, so what we wanna do is we're now gonna build our grid of squares. They're gonna be totally flush with each other because as a puzzle, when we put this back together, we want all the four corners to push up against each other. So that helps us keep it seamless because we're able to really make it like as close as possible. We tape it back up and so she's going to have, you know, little tape marks on the back um, piecing all this together. So let's do this. Right now, obviously, we can't cut it no matter how big our paper is. So let's bring in a square. And here is our first square. So and we're going to make it 11 inches. Technically, we can do 11 and a half inches, but I don't like dealing with half inches. And in this case, it really doesn't matter. At 23 inches, whether I do 11 inches, 11 plus 11 is 22, plus another 11 is 33, or 11.5 plus 11.5 is 23 inches, it's still, no matter what, I need three columns. So we're gonna put down the first one, go over to your position feature and round to the nearest whole number. So 9.6 becomes 10, 4.5 becomes five. So what we're saying is your X coordinate is the one running across. So we're saying go over 10 units, go down five units, and here's the beginning of our square. We're gonna duplicate this 11 by 11 square, and then we're gonna put it really, really close. When you do this, you don't really have to do any math, except rounding. So 21.25 becomes 21, 5.25 becomes five. Now we have a set of flush squares. We're gonna duplicate again, and we're gonna put it right here. All right, so, 32.2 becomes 32, 4.8 becomes five. All right, we've got three squares completely flush with each other. I'll show you the math behind it. So this one, oh, I just moved that one. Hold on, let me undo it for a second. This is another reason why I like putting it straight on because if you accidentally move something, I know exactly where it goes because I'm gonna round to the nearest whole number. It's gonna be close enough that I can do that. If you don't do it this way, you're now gonna be kind of pushing it up and down, hoping that that's where it should have been, right? Okay, so here we start at 10. 10 plus 11 is 21. And so there's 21. 21 plus 11 is 32. <laughs> and there's 32. Make sense? All right, hit your shift key and go and grab all three squares. So you see they're highlighted, so they're active right now, these three squares together, duplicate them because they're already flush with each other. Now we're just gonna make this set flushed with the top set. So put it really close and change it from 10.1 to 10, 16.3 to 16, and duplicate again. And we're gonna make this last set flushed with this one, okay. So 10.02 becomes 10, 27.1 becomes 27. Okay, now scroll all the way down on your right-hand side panel, click on the black background and arrange, send to the front. Now we're gonna look to see where all the seams are gonna be. And I'm gonna show you what I don't like. And sometimes we can't avoid it because of the way the image is. But right away, what I don't like is, do you see her little bun? This is gonna slice off a little piece of her bun. So it's a little piece that I need to keep track of. I don't want that. I want big pieces here that are gonna be easy for me to cut and easy for me to keep track of and tape back up together again. So I'm gonna move this over a little bit. And I kinda of like this because this is a piece here. It's not huge, but it's okay. Um, and this piece comes down, it, they're big pieces. Um, I wonder if I can move this all the way over. Oh look, see we don't even need this square right here. Um, but this one is gonna be tiny. Okay, I know what we're gonna do. Okay, I like it right here, we're gonna delete this. This piece, while it's slender, it's still like a pretty decent piece, but these, I'm gonna get rid of this piece and these two pieces, hold on, hit the shift key, and I'm gonna move it over. And you see when I'm moving it, and here, I'm just gonna round again. So 14.4 becomes 14 and 27. I know that everything is still flushed together. That's why we built the squares, okay? 
All right, so this is gonna cut into one, seven pieces. Not all the pieces are gonna be big, but it'll be okay. So let's start slicing one square at a time. All right, so that's our first square. Let's do this one. And what I like to do also is after I slice everything, I like to move all the black pieces over and reassemble it to make sure that everything's sliced properly. And then also, it's my little road map for when I take it off the mat, I know which way it's supposed to be. Oh man, did I mess up right here? I did mess up right there. That's gonna be a tiny piece by itself. Okay, it's okay, it just, it is what it is. All right. So maybe I would have moved this a little bit differently. Oh, we could have easily moved it down. Look at, we had all this space. I didn't notice that. Okay, let's slice this one. So you see what I mean on this one? If we had moved her down, this piece would have been connected to another piece and it would have been way better. But that's okay. I don't think I'll be doing this piece, so. All right, so here are our pieces. This is the piece that I'm talking about. This little guy, not connected to anything, so I'm kind of disappointed I didn't notice that. Okay, but see, this is a big piece. I mean, even this piece, while it's not um, huge, it's still seven inches long, so it's a big piece that we're dealing with. All right, so here, this goes here and then this goes here. All of this, we can delete. Okay, Sailor Moon, 30 inches, looking good. Let's save it, and then what we're gonna do is, you know what, let me see if this piece is connected. Oh, it, it is not connected, because we can contour. So when we look at this, it's, oh, it's two pieces, ugh, three pieces. How annoying is that? Okay, <laughs> let's go to make it. I'm gonna show you how to condense your pieces. Okay, this just says that you're gonna need a 12 by 24 mat. Just click okay. All right, so this first piece, it says it's 14 inches long, but no. We're gonna rotate it. And I rotated it too much oh no I did it so see this fits under a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock so you just want to make sure when you rotate things that you move all these other pieces so that it doesn't um, overlap and cut over your pieces okay so this okay this piece we're gonna click on the three dots move object and let's see if it can fit with this piece so we'll move it here confirm and let's see what we have. Can I rotate this piece? Oh, it's so close to being there, but it's not. Okay, so just click on the three dots, move object, and we're gonna add a new one because we don't wanna put it on this one if you don't have a 12 by 24 mat. So we're gonna click new, white, and now it added a new mat for us. So here we have it. Now on this one, I mean, you could, you could be more efficient, actually. We could save this piece as scrap for next time. So if you move everything over here, then this big piece is easier to reuse next time. All right, so here's our black, that piece. All right, this piece we can fit somewhere else. So let's click on this. Oh, these two pieces. Um, click on the three dots, move object. So that big piece can, I think, fit here. So let's click on this one. Yep. So I think I'm gonna do this. Now this guy, definitely move it, move object. And I'm going to put it with this one again. There, 
So your black is this page, this one, this one. These are all big pieces, right? Here, here, and here. Nothing more we can do. Let's look at her bow tie is so cute. And look how big it is. I mean, she's big, 30 inches. All right, here is the face. So again, with the face, I would rotate it. So it's at an angle. It definitely fits. Look at that, way smaller than 12 inches. And this hand, I think, can fit in here. So the skin color cardstock is one 12 by 12 page. Okay, here's our yellow. So again with the yellow, I'm gonna rotate this one. You don't even need to rotate it that much. Okay. Um, let's put the buns up here. Let's try to consolidate as much as we can. This one, I'm gonna turn this way. There, it's gonna fit like that. This one, I'm going to actually maybe do this. So move this down a little bit, move this bun back over here, this bun maybe up here. I'm so bad at this, no, okay, it's not fitting anywhere, but it will fit, okay. So your hair is gonna be two sheets of yellow cardstock. So here is one, and then this part, we're just, if you have a 12 by 24 mat, this is what I would do, I would put two 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. So the first one up here, and then the second one down here. If you do not have a 12 by 24 mat, don't worry about this. Just click on this, three dots, move object, and create a new yellow mat, right? Okay, so I, so Design Space is acting up because I can't move this hair it should easily move onto here. So at least we're not making it right now. So no big deal. Here's the eye. That's a scrap piece of paper that can, you know, cut that. Let's see, what is this? Uh, that's part of her dress. So this is a different blue. I would make it the same blue as my other one. So I'm gonna move object. I'm gonna make it part of my skirt blue. So here we go. Nobody has time for a little piece like that. <laughs> okay, and here are the three stripes, remember? Look at that, that's so much better. Will they fit in there? Look at that. And then this can fit in here. So next time for scraps, if you're gonna use you know, glitter cardstock or something, you would have this piece right here and then all of this bottom piece. Okay, and here's our white skirt. We are our white shirt. That's it. So Sailor Moon, I can't wait to see what you do with it for the special request. Tag me when you guys do these projects. I would love to um, to see your um, your projects. All right. Let me know what you think. Uh, comments, questions, and if you have a special request, post it here as well, and I will reach out to you. All right. Thanks, guys.